Hello everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the iPhone 12 Pro and compare it against the iPhone 11 and see how both these phones hold up in 2023. Now the first thing I would definitely tell you is, you know, if you want to pick up either one of these phones, all links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now side by side, these phones are pretty different as you guys can tell. The iPhone 12 Pro came out in 2020, the iPhone 11 came out in 2019, and these two phones are not supposed to be competitors. I think they've held up fairly well, and a lot of people were interested in this comparison back in 2020, so it's only right that we redo it in 2023. Now, on the front of the iPhone 11, we have a 6.1-inch IPS LCD panel, and it's not a bad panel. It's a lower resolution than the iPhone 12 Pro. It's also an LCD panel, and I prefer like OLED way over you know LCD. But you can see, I mean, it still looks pretty good. Even over the camera, it still looks pretty decent. You have a notch up top. You have thicker bezels on this phone as well. And it is a curved size, so it's not as flat as something like the iPhone 12 Pro. But I do think this is still like a pretty good looking phone overall. And even when you compare it against the iPhone 14s, there's still a ton of overlap for sure. So just kind of keep that in mind. With something like the iPhone 12 Pro, this phone, you know, you're getting a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display on this phone. And I would probably make the argument that this phone's panel is very, it's, met, it's much better than the iPhone 11s. But it's also probably the same thing almost as like an iPhone 14. Like this is still a very good panel. You have the notch up top, you have, you know, thinner bezels here. There's still like a little bit of a bezel, but it's nothing compared to like, it's not a big deal. But it is definitely a better looking phone, I would say, than the iPhone 11. So probably keep that in mind at the end of the day. Now, in terms of the thinness and thickness between both these phones, you can kind of get the idea that both phones are kind of thicker. I don't know if there's one that's like thicker, way thicker than the other one. But I would say that the bodies are fairly more similar than not. But you are getting this flat side here. You're getting this like metallic like reflective material which looks really cool here on top of that you're getting lightning ports on the bottom of both these no other ports and on the back you are also getting a different setup i mean both these ones are very different but if you look close i mean there's a lot of overlap too the iphone 11 you have that dual camera setup up top with that standard glass back with the iphone 12 pro you had that triple camera setup with a lidar sensor and you had this frosted glass back so both backs feel good, but I think the 12 Pro definitely just feels so much more premium. And look how much better it looks. I mean, that phone looks like an actual machine, which is so beautiful. The iPhone 11 still looks good too, but the 12 Pro is like no competition. Both phones have wireless charging, both phones have IP certification. The iPhone 12 Pro has this MagSafe charging capability here, which I used for a while and I don't really like it that much, but you have that type of capability, which is nice. And in terms of that, that kind of covers it up on the outside. Now moving on to another very interesting area between these two phones is actually the software updates. Now because the iPhone 11 came out in 2019, this is going to be one of those phones that's probably not going to last as long as the iPhone 12 Pro, mostly because of software updates. The iPhone 11 came out you know, in 2019, so because the iPhone 12 Pro is the newer one, typically it's going to last longer, that's usually how these things go. But that's not to say the iPhone 11 is already not going to last long, like this phone's going to last for probably another three years all things considered, security updates, software updates, all that stuff. So this one's going to last for a pretty much a long period of time, so it's not going anywhere anytime soon. With the iPhone 12 Pro, this phone is a really good supported phone too. It's going to last for a very long amount of time, and I like this phone a lot because of those things. So with the 12 Pro, you're not really missing out on too much, and I think that in and of itself is a really cool thing, but the 12 Pro is definitely going to outlast the iPhone 11 when it kind of comes down to it. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there as well. Now let's go into a speed comparison between both these phones. The iPhone 12 Pro has that Apple A14 binding chip inside of it with 6GB of RAM, but the iPhone 11 has that Apple A13 binding chip inside of it with 4GB of RAM. So well, let's go and see which one's the faster phone between both. Okay, there we go. Let's go and hop out of the applications. They are 11 is here, 12 Pro's here. Phone calls 3, 2, 1. Okay, about the same thing. Let's go into the App Store, 3, 2, 1. And the 12 Pro was honestly way slower there. I don't know what's going on there. I guess we were on two different panels though, so we'll kind of have to kind of loop that out. But we'll go ahead and scroll through here. And you can see, I think that they're both kind of the same thing. There's not really a big massive difference. The 12 Pro kind of seems to be a little bit faster there when I'm scrolling through. Regardless, they both look great. 60 hertz panels on both too, so not really too much difference there. Clock, three, two, one. I do wonder why the iPhone 12 Pro is moving so much. Hopping out of here. Let's go and get into camera, three, two, one. Okay. Let's go and hop out of here. Photos, three, two, one. Perfect. Let's go and hop out of here. This is still, actually, they're both kind of the same speed so far. I haven't really found anything interesting between them yet. Let's go into something like Fruit Ninja. I don't know where all these other apps here are. Let's do something like Temple Run 2, three, two, one. 
And even just in something like this, you can already tell that the 12 Pro is you know, quite a bit faster than something like the iPhone 11. It could be because this is on the older version of the app and things like that. But still, it's a pretty interesting that this is a much faster application here than something like the iPhone 11. Getting into some gameplay, let's see if there's some glitches. 11 did glitch up a little bit. I think some of you may have seen that. So that's kind of one thing to keep in mind there. It's going into Subway Surfers, which I do have here somewhere. Three, two, one. Now, this is not a big, massive application either, but you can kind of tell here too, like, you know, this one was a much faster application, at least in the beginning with, but then we don't have to download an update. So just kind of have to hop out of these ones. Let's go hop out of this one. Let's go and try something like Files, three, two, one. Okay, the 12 Pro is kind of fast. The 11 was also still fast too, it was right behind it. iTunes Store, three, two, one. Okay, the 12 Pro I think was the faster one. And we can try like translate three, two, one. Okay, both were very fast too. But I think the 12 Pro is faster. And I think the 12 Pro is probably the faster one when it comes down to it. Both these phones are fairly fast. I think the 12 Pro though was consistently the faster one when it came down to it. But I think the iPhone 11 is still plenty of a fast phone. I think both of these have a lot of overlap, which is really nice. But I do think the iPhone 12 Pro is probably the faster one for sure. So that kind of covers it up there. Now in the camera department, this is probably a pretty big difference here if you ask me. So we're getting a triple camera setup on the iPhone 12 Pro. The iPhone 11, we're getting a dual camera setup. You're getting a wide and ultra wide sensor on the iPhone 11. The 12 Pro, you're getting wide, ultra wide, and telephoto lens with our LiDAR, with that LiDAR sensor, which is pretty cool, but I haven't really used it that much ever since it kind of got implemented. They both can do 4K at 60 on the front and the back, which is a really nice touch. Now on the back or on the, like the whole entire camera UI of this thing, you do have that 0.5x zoom, which is pretty cool. So you have the ability of zooming out a ton on this type of device. You also have 5x zoom here, which is really good. So it's not comparatively or compared competitive against the iPhone 12 Pro's camera, but it's still good. Like it's still a good camera, don't get me wrong. You have video mode, slow mode, time lapse. You have portrait mode here, panorama mode. Like it's a good camera for sure, don't get me wrong. But I think when it comes down to it, it's quite clear. Something like the iPhone 12 Pro camera is going to be the better one here, at least in my opinion. I mean, this is a very, very good camera for what you're getting. I would say the 13 Pro is a very solid upgrade, but the 12 Pro from the iPhone 11 Pro, I think it was the same, but from the iPhone 11 to the 12 Pro, that is honestly kind of a bigger upgrade. So you're still getting that 0.5x zoom, which as I mentioned before, just kind of one of those things to keep in mind. But with the zooming in capability, it's 10x. Since then, it's actually been a little bit more on the newer models. But the iPhone 11 has 5x. This is double that. So if you're wanting to zoom into a lot of photos and zoom in from like far distances, this is by far going to be the better way to go for a majority of people. You're also getting video mode here, slow mode, time lapse portrait mode, panorama mode, you're not really getting any features like cinematic mode or anything from both these phones, but you are getting, I would say, an overall better performing phone in terms of the camera setup on something like the iPhone 12 Pro than on the iPhone 11. But that kind of answered the question, like you're getting a much better on the camera, you're getting just a much better phone, I would say in general, on something like the iPhone 12 Pro than the iPhone 11. Like this is a much better feeling phone. The only issue I had with my iPhone 12 when I was using it was massive, massive battery degradation very soon. I don't know what that was about. I do wonder what this phone's battery is at now because it was like at 80 something percent last time I left it. And it's still 87%, so it hasn't really gone down too much. But this phone's battery health hasn't really aged too well, which is the biggest issue here. But it's still a very good phone, like very good build quality, very good performance, very good screen, very good camera. It's a good phone overall, and if you can get it for like a cheap price, like 400 bucks, and go for it. The iPhone 11 is cheaper than the iPhone 12 Pro, and this is a really good phone too, don't get me wrong. Like this phone is, I think, still pretty solid for a lot of people out there. You might be better off if you buy something like an iPhone 12 or 12 Pro, but I would still say if you want to save some money, getting the iPhone 11 is a pretty, you know, good option. So it kind of covers it up there as well. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.